Hey guys, Seb here. Uh, this is Red Power 2 tutorial number 2. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys about gates. Uh, all the gates that are involved in Red Power 2. All of them. So this might be a long tutorial. Right. Let's start out with the sequencer. It's quite simple. Um, it outputs signals on every, each of the four sides. Uh, you can change the time intervals. Uh, the interval counts as how long it takes to turn 90 degrees, as you can see. It also affects how long the the signal is switched on. Right, next is the timer. Oh, wait, let me just set my... Oh, my smooth lighting is on. The lighting is still failing, though, so I'm just going to turn this off by increasing it to 80 seconds. There we go. Okay, the timer works the exact same way, except for the fact that uh, it only pulses... It uh, delivers a one tick pulse and it can be turned on and off and it's only three outputs instead of one out instead of four outputs because you have the input also right uh, so the RS latch is interesting basically if both signals are turned on it turns the lamps off if one is turned off the corresponding side is turned on. Now if the other one is turned on, off, sorry, um, the corresponding side is turned on. Right, if you turn one of them off, you can't actually turn the other one off. It won't actually do anything. But yeah, it's a bit confusing. But it's fine. The OR gate. Uh, if either of the inputs is true, the output will be true. So yeah, either input is on, the output will be on. Doesn't matter how many inputs you have on, the output will be on. Well, unless you don't have any on. Yeah. Basically, just have one on, and the output will be on. The NOR gate is the same idea, except for the fact that it's inverted. So, um, well, if anyone is on, the signal will be uh, off. The, so the input, if any input is on, the output will be off. Right. Uh, next is the AND gate. All signals, all inputs have to be on in order for the output to be on. So if you just have two on, the output won't be on, but you switch the third on and the output will be on. Okay, the NAND gate is the opposite. Basically, if any signal, well, all the signals have to be on in order for the lamp to be off. The XOR gate. Uh, if the inputs are different, the output will be on, but if they're the same, the output will be off. So you can see if they're both off or both on, the output will be off. If one of them is on and one of them is off, the output will be on. The XNOR gate is the same thing, except it's inverted. So same signals, output on, as you can see. Different signals, output off. Right. The NOT gate. Uh, the input is on, no, the, yeah, the input is on, like so, the output is off. The input is off, the output is on. Um, in vanilla Minecraft, this would be created using a redstone torch. Quite simply, by placing it like, so if you have an input here, you place a torch there, sorry, here. The output is off. If the uh, input is off, the output is on quite simple but this is just a compact version of it right here is the pulse farmer basically every time it's turned off uh, every sorry every time it's turned on it creates a one tick pulse as you can see no matter how long it's turned on for it will create that one tick pulse now the toggle latch is interesting every time it receives a signal it will switch output side uh, this can happen from either of these two sides, or you can just right-click it, or, yeah, right-click it. Um, the next is the buffer gate. The buffer gate basically is like a one-way rail. Um, if you turn this input on, all of the outputs are off, on, sorry. But if you turn any of these on, it won't run, the, um, the signal won't run the opposite way. Hope this makes sense. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple. The multiplexer is quite interesting. When the signal is off, 
only the right side controls the output. When the input's off, the right side controls the output. Um, but if we turn the this input on, the other side controls it. As you can see, this won't actually do anything. Right, very interesting. Uh, the counter. The counter is probably the most confusing thing in all of this. Basically, this is the positive side, this is the negative side. As you flip the switch, uh, the lever, sorry, lever, it will move a certain amount of ticks in each direction. So if I switch, flip this one, it will move towards positive. If I flip this one, it will move towards negative. Um, yeah, so I hope you can see that this can be quite useful. Doop, 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 doop. It has to receive a certain amount of pulses in order to move to the other side. Now you can program this. We'll control it. Uh, the maximum count is basically how many ticks are in between here. And then the increment is how many ticks it moves every time it receives a signal. So if we put it to 10, for example, that's when it goes up towards the positive side. And the decrement to 1 when it moves down towards the negative side. Every time you move it down to the negative side, you have to hit it 10 times, but uh, to the positive side, you only have to hit it once. As you can see, this is how it works. Right. Uh, the repeater is just like the normal repeater, except you can make it like extremely slow. So you can put a really long, oh God, I'm an idiot. You can put an extremely long delay on it. Like so long, I'm not even going to stand there wait. You'll see it turn on eventually. Then also, is basically an intersection for two wires without them uh, interacting with each other and it looks pretty up oh, it just turned on yeah that's basically what this does uh, the invert ses cell is basically like an null cell except the bottom of the cell um, this input will invert the top input but it can be overridden by this input as you can see so, so um, yeah, so if this input is off, then this can control the and invert the input. Then the top input, well, the top output is opposite of the bottom. But if this is flipped on, then this doesn't have an effect. Right. Okay, uh, next is the non-invert cell. It's basically the same, except when the bottom is on, the top is on. You see? But you can also switch this on independently, and then this won't affect it. All right. Next is the randomizer. Basically, when it's turned on, it just sends out random signals. I believe every ticket has to set, uh, a chance to send out a signal on each a side. So these are these three sides are independent of each other. The synchronizer, basically, is described as a random no, um, sorry, a lazy AND gate. It remembers a signal. If you were to ignore this completely. You can look at this, and then, as you can see, if this were an AND gate, both of these ha were turned on, and the output would, would be turned on also. Now, one thing that's different about this is that uh, when they're both turned on, the output is not constant, but it's a uh, pulse, as you can see. Now, another thing that's interesting is that it remembers signals. So if it receives an input from the left side and the input uh, disappears, it'll still remember that, as you can see here. And then as soon as it receives the uh, an input from the right side, it'll output the pulse. As you can see, this works both ways. Now, the reason for the third input is to um, reset. So basically, it has remembered the left side has been off. This will reset it completely, as you can see. Um, that's basically how it works. Now the last gate is the light sensor, which I showed off in my um, in my automated lighting system video. If you want to go check that out, it's pretty simple. It basically just outputs a signal when it receives light. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching, and remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and have a great day. Bye.